Intel's NUC, or what we will here onwards call NUC, is short for Next Unit of Computing, Intel's small form factor PC solutions capable of matching much larger and bulkier systems. From its first iteration until today, Intel has developed various options to tackle various workloads, from office productivity all the way to gaming grade performance. Today we have here the NUC11 Pro dubbed Tiger Canyon, a Core i5 powered NUC that's ready for office work and some content creation as well. But how much can you expect out of this little guy? Well, let's find out here together. Our unit of the NUC 11 Pro is powered by the 11th Gen Intel Core i5 1135G7, which offers 4 cores and 8 threads with a relatively conservative base clock of just 2.4GHz, but it does tout a maximum boost clock of 4.2GHz. It also packs the integrated Iris XD graphics, with 80 execution units running at up to 1.3GHz. This is not the discrete DG1 GPU, but it's pretty close. Since Intel does offer Intel QuickSync and their integrated graphics are actually pretty well equipped for video editing, I'm quite excited to see how well it will handle 4K video editing. In terms of design, the NUC 11 Pro retains much of its roots. It's a little dark grey box that's no bigger than my lunchbox. From the front, we can see the power button and the two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, which is enough for your occasional thumb drive and whatnot. I do wish that we had at least a USB-C port in front here as well, as most storage drives supporting the faster USB protocols feature USB-C connectors. On both the left and right side, we see intake holes, which will provide the cooling system within with plenty of cool air. And over the back is where the exhaust vents are located, and during use you can actually feel hot air exiting from the holes there. In general, the NUC 11 Pro is barely audible even under heavy load, and it is virtually silent if placed slightly further away from the user. Under the exhaust vents is where you'll find more ports. There are two USB 4 ports, one supporting Thunderbolt 4 and the other supporting up to Thunderbolt 3. There's also one USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, one USB 2.0 port, and two HDMI ports. In total, the NUC 11 Pro will support four displays at once, thanks to the two HDMI and two USB-C ports. And since there are two Thunderbolt connections, you can also use it with an external graphics card enclosure, which is something we will be testing later too. Diving deeper into the NUC 11 Pro, we find a single 500GB M.2 SATA drive from Transcend, and a single stick of 16GB Sodium DDR4 memory. Now, this is something to keep in mind as single channel memory will impact performance, especially in the graphics department. There are two Sodium slots here, they will support a total of 64 gigs of DDR for 3200, so you can kit it out to be quite a multitasking beast. There's also an additional M.2 PCIe Gen 4 slot for SSD upgrades down the line. This to me is pretty important as you can upgrade the NUC 11 Pro to get a much better experience than what we are having here because we only have a SATA drive installed. The Wi-Fi chip is also upgradable if you need to, but the Wi-Fi 6 AX201 is already great for 2021 with support for Wi-Fi 6. There's the Wi-Fi 6E AX210 in existence now, but I don't think there's a need for that since there aren't that many Wi-Fi 6E routers in the market yet. And flipping the NUC 11 Pro over, we find that there's almost nothing under the top cover, aside from a Wi-Fi antenna, as well as a metal cover with an opening at the back, which is for the exhaust. Now it's time to check out the NUC 11 Pro's performance. First up, the storage. This is the Transcend M.2 SSD 430S, so with consideration to the speed limits of the SATA interface that's capped at 600MB per second, this is pretty good. Nothing too out of the ordinary here, it's good enough for just about anything as storage speeds do not exactly improve the experience even in content creation. When apps can really take advantage of faster storage, there's the M.2 PCIe 4.0 slot waiting anyway, so we're all good. In 3D Mark, the integrated graphics barely shines. This is partly due to the fact that we are dealing with a single channel memory configuration here, so performance isn't as good as what you might be able to get with dual channel memory. According to 3 Mark, the NUC 11 Pro can hardly handle any modern games at 1080p, with it estimating the NUC 11 Pro to deliver less than 30fps at the maximum settings in Battlefield 5, GTA 5, and even eSports titles like Apex Legends and Fortnite. 3 Mark's database places the NUC 11 Pro's performance close to a 2020 Office laptop, 
featuring the i7-1065G7. Moving over to PC Mark, the NUC 11 Pro scores an overall score of 4530. Breaking it down, it scored 9075 points in the essential section, which gauges its performance in app startup time, video conferencing, and web browsing. In productivity, it scored 6266. This is a representation of its performance in spreadsheet handling and also writing. Last but not least, it scored 4439 points in digital content creation, which indicates pretty low performance in photo and video editing, as well as rendering and visualization workloads. What this tells us is that the NUC 11 Pro excels at everyday tasks like web browsing and video conferencing and also productivity, which makes the NUC 11 Pro ideal for office work. But the lowish digital content score is definitely quite worrying as we want to use it for content creation. However, rest assured, as we did find the NUC 11 Pro being able to handle content creation commendably, which you will see in a bit. PCMark ranks the NUC 11 Pro's productivity chops at a similar level as a gaming laptop from 2020, which is pretty impressive for such a small package. Seeing how well the NUC 11 Pro performed in productivity, we decided to run the PCMark's applications benchmark that specifically tests performance in Microsoft Office apps. As you can see, the NUC 11 Pro had no issues whatsoever handling the Microsoft Office suite. No lags or anything, just smooth sailing experience. It is pretty safe to say that the NUC 11 Pro can handle anything you want to do in Microsoft Office. Enough about benchmarks, let's get into the overall user experience. While the benchmarks showed that content creation might challenge what we have here, the NUC 11 Pro actually performed really well. We downloaded Adobe Trial and ran Adobe Lightroom to edit a single raw image taken by the Sony Alpha 7 Mark III. This is an uncompressed 14-bit raw file where a single image can easily exceed 20 megabytes. A weaker PC might encounter long loading times between each adjustment. But as you can see here, we didn't encounter any of that on the NUC 11 Pro. The experience is smooth with nary a delay between each adjustment and it allowed us to work without having to deal with distracting or annoying waiting times. And much to my surprise, the NUC 11 Pro is capable of video editing in Premiere Pro as well. The footage used here is 4K with a data rate of up to 100 megabits per second. And while we do have more complex files in the market now, this still takes quite beefy hardware to properly handle. Even on our main editing PC that packs a Ryzen 7 3800 XT and a GeForce RTX 3070, we still had to scale down to quarter resolution preview to ensure a smooth editing experience. But with the NUC 11 Pro, we switched between half and full resolution preview with little to no frame drop. This is clearly thanks to the Intel QuickSync feature that handles video encoding like a champ. Once again, we might probably see even better performance if you went with dual channel memory instead of the single channel 16GB configuration we have here. Another thing that you might expect from just about every PC is some light gaming capability. I mean, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, right? We got Genshin Impact to run quite well on the NUC 11 Pro. For those familiar with this game, you will also know that this game is developed to run on everything from smartphones to the PlayStation 5. Despite it being ready to be played on your smartphone, the system requirements for the PC version is rather high, with the recommended configuration calling for a Core i7 or equivalent, 16GB of RAM, and at least a GeForce GTX 1060 6GB. At Full HD, the NUC 11 Pro runs this game quite smoothly, although you will have to drop the graphics settings down to the low preset and turn off anti-aliasing and bloom. The screen recording does impact the performance somewhat, but you can be assured that the experience is playable enough with these settings. One of the main joys of PC ownership is that you can upgrade and customize it. But with this being a NUC, you can't really expect too much, right? Well, think again. This is the Cooler Master Mastercase EG200 external GPU enclosure equipped with the NVIDIA Titan X. Its Thunderbolt 3 interface is probably intended so that it can be paired with Ultra Portables, but you can use it with a NUC as well, like what we're doing here. As mentioned earlier, the NUC 11 Pro not only has a Thunderbolt 3 interface, it also has a Thunderbolt 4 port. The yeah. potential for expansion is definitely yeah. present here on the NUC 11 Pro. Once set up, we're not only able to game smoothly yeah. at low, but even up to 4K with medium settings. While we didn't test with more taxing games, you can rest assured that if you put a more powerful GPU into the Cooler Master EG200 external GPU enclosure, you can probably play even AAA titles like Cyberpunk 2077 on the NUC 11 Pro. 
The Intel NUC 11 kit with the Core i5 1135G7 like the one we are playing with here costs just RM1899. But you have to keep in mind that can we buy it as a bare bones kit, so we will need to foot out about RM500 more to get an equivalent 500GB of storage and 16GB of RAM that we have in our test unit here, so you will be looking at around RM2399. We love the NUC 11 Pro for it being barely audible under load and the fact that if we want to upgrade down the line, there's actually a PCIe 4.0 X4 slot waiting. And while it didn't shine that much in benchmarks, the performance in actual workloads like image editing and video editing was perfectly acceptable, and in some ways even better than many full-sized desktops. Last but not least, Thunderbolt offers a nice additional upgrade path as well, allowing for stuff like external GPUs or really fast storage. Throughout our review, the only minor drawback was that the fact there is no USB-C port in front. Aside from that, we really can't find any other shortcomings with the NUC Pro. But of course, if you find one, you can point it out and let us know in the comments down below. And with that, we conclude our review. The NUC Pro is a pretty great office PC with the potential to be turned into a respectable gaming system if you connect an external GPU. We would also like to take the opportunity to thank Intel for providing the NUC Pro and Cooler Master for sending us the Mastercase EG200 external GPU enclosure used in this review. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more content like this. I'm Winston Chan from Port.net and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!